ladies and gentlemen, the Commodore. He's sitting out. He's sitting out. 
<laughs> you, you, you don't even know what the question was. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Angela, what was your question? My question was... Let me get some clear type or something. I love, I love your chemistry between the two of you. But yes, I mean, thank you for clearing that up, too. Yes. But I'm asking you two, personally, is retiring on your radar? Are you thinking about it? Yes, it, it, it's, it's on my radar, <laughs> but it's not yet. I, I'm looking forward to that now, whereas before, you know, up until a few years ago, I wouldn't even think about you know, retirement. But now I'm just, I'm just probably 71 and, you know, Thank you so much. And so uh, I think it's time for me to look a little bit, you know, so I'm going to enjoy my family too, and I'm going to have some me time. And as Wax said, you know, you know I was coming in and carry on coming on so you see a little bit. Retire, it's, we, we know we're living in the best hands possible. So that's a good thing. So I'll be able to keep back and, and know that it's all been taken care of. Well, for me, I'm never retired. They're going to bury me on that stage. No, I'm just kidding. They're like to bury me last night. But anyway. <laughs> We tried, we tried last night. Now, 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 I want you all to know that, that that was set up, okay? He set that cord over there. He knew I was coming out there, and I slipped up on it. I was expecting you earlier. Yeah, I know that. But I am fine. Everybody's asked me all day, how are you doing? I am perfectly fine. My wife said to me last night, she said, we'll know how, uh, if you're hurt or not, uh, when you wake up tomorrow morning. You know, so I woke, this morning, I woke up this morning, I let her know in a, uncertain, in a certain way I was okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, William, Anson's got a show called Pillow Talk. <laughs> and you, can get, you can get down with her. Pillow Talk. He was just going there a little uh, bit. Uh, so, but, but, yeah, now, I think at some point, you know, we, we have to, you have to look at it and go, you know what, I can no longer do this. You know, because it really is rough out there on the road. Okay, I'm on this road. Well, I mean, our normal wake-up time is between 2 a.m. and 4.30 a.m. every morning. And we have to put three to four days a week, okay? So that's every morning. And, and then we're going to an airport usually. And maybe the ride to the airport is an hour long, you know? And then you're on a plane, you know, you know, and church through the airport, get on a, in a car and psh, another hour drive to the, to the hotel or whatever. So, you know, day after day of that, it can, it can get the best of it. But having said that, I, I think we can all say that we love it. We, we love being on stage. All right. well, let, me, let me ask this question. I mean, we've had a lot of uh, uh, acts in the for All Access Pass, and we ask all kinds of questions. One particular question I'd like to know is, when it comes to the new guy, um, are there things that you talk to them about or uh, teach them, and, and, and as well as you, are there things that you've learned, or things that you have to continue to do to keep this legacy going, in particular? Well, we have switches. Old school. Old school. We beat the hell out of them. We, 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 we have switches, you know. And say again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. You know what I mean? And they bring back, you know, you bring back the thick one. No, no, bring me back that little skinny one. You know, wrap around you now, right? No, you know, th there's a learning process for everything, right? And um, and we're going through that with them now. You know, th there's there's two phases, right? One is the music phase and uh, and how you act, you know, because uh, what do you do when you're on stage, right? And how do you perform, you know? And so you have to go through all that with them because uh, they need to learn that early so it becomes a part of them. Okay, on the other side of that is the business phase, right? So that people don't steal your money, don't take advantage of you, you know, don't put you in situations that you don't want to be in, and then you're scared to, to say anything because you don't want to lose the gig or whatever, right? So you have to learn how to stand up for yourself 
uh, and, and all of your rights. And uh, so it's, it's a lot of things to learn. So yes, there's a, there's a teaching process here, absolutely. And I'll just add this to that, that we have, with, yes, we have conversations with him and, and it's easy for me to talk to this guy because this guy is set in his ways so there's not much I can teach him, right? <laughs> that old dog thing. So, um, but I was the new guy once, 38 years ago, and so uh, I know what I, I took from, from Wack, he called him Wack, he's an opinion. I know what I took from him physically and all sorts of other ways. And, uh, and Walter Clyde Orange too, so I'm just trying to pass that stuff on because, you know, this is the new guy and we have total faith in him and we, and we love him and love his dad, all that good stuff. But there's, there's a, a coming up process, as you said, and we want, not only want to teach him about how we present ourselves on stage, there's the new guy in this, this awesome group called the Commodores, okay? And we also want to teach him how to carry himself around off stage, because even off stage, he, he represents the Commodores. So, you know, it's not, yeah. You know, and the good thing is about this guy is that we don't have to teach him that much in that department because we know his father and we've known him since he was this big. And we've only seen him come up as the gracious young man who's going to be a gracious adult. And we're proud to have him about. So, yeah. Well, I can't, well, I can't wait to see what he has to say right now. Yeah. What do you say about all this? Well, I'll watch my words because my bosses are sitting right here. So. <laughs> Just to echo what's already been said, um, it's really important to pay attention on how to do your job. Career. Mix them together, right? But off stage is a little bit more important. Being around you lovely people, which are, I, I call you all my family now, so now we know each other. But getting to a point of having a conversation, watching what you say. I have some of the best teachers between William, JD, and our father, and our mentors, and you know other acts here on the ship of how to not only be an entertainer, but how to talk to people, and how to really let people know that away from the lights and the nice clothing, the glitter, the outfits, you're a regular person. So I have a lot more to say about that, but. The crux of it is that, guess what, there's a lot to learn and there's still a lot to learn and I've already learned a lot, so yeah, that's really it happened, so. What a great you answer. Sound, you, sound, you sound just like me, don't you? Oh, wait a minute. Strong, strong and humble, okay? Strong like you. That's right, powerful. I love it. Very I love it. I love it. I love what you do. It really is beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and you're right. This is family. Coming here every year, it's kind of like a family reunion, right? I mean, does anybody agree? Yeah, definitely. Is. And we all grew up to the soundtrack of the Commodores. Or what we made, because we're already grown. We just lived our life by so many of their songs. And I just discovered something today. In the corridors of the Soul Train cruise, I'm cruising by and I see JD. And we're just talking. I'm like, yeah, let's go to the Commodore's interview, right? And all that. I didn't realize this was JD. I was talking to him. He's like, ah, of course I'm going to be. And I looked at him. I was like, you know what? I've been talking to you all week and didn't realize this. And then I also realized. A long, long, long time ago, one of my first interviews on BET, I was sitting in for Donnie Simpson no, on this, video you know, this so. Is about the this is not about no, it. it's about. <laughs> <laughs> Am I missing something here? Cody, you gotta be in there. See, you're nothing like Cody. Cody's nothing like you. <laughs> no, but one of my first interviews was with the Commodores. I don't know if you guys remember, J.D. said he remembered, but I don't know that he did. It was just so cool because he, you know, was relatively new with the group, and, you know, the big elephant in the room was, okay, Lionel Richie, nobody really wanted to bring it up, but you did. And uh, so can we talk about that, just uh, the transition at the time and how the audiences kind of took to you? Okay, so, so... 
Okay, so long story short, but... Is that a real accent that you have there? Yes, it's a real one. Actually, actually. I can't help it. I love 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 it. I am from London, England. I, I left uh, um, London when I was 21 years old in search of, I wanted to be a musician and I said, well, let's go to America and see what we've got. I loved all the Motown music. And I, I was like, my, my, my first person I ever heard sing that really laid in cement what I wanted to be as an adult was, in my career, was Frankie Lyman. When I saw Frankie Lyman singing Why Do Fools Fall In Love? on a little black and white tea in England, living with my parents. And he came on and sang Waterfalls for him. And I said, oh my God, I want to be that guy, you know? And so I grabbed a banana and we had to keep a bottle of fruit in front of the TV. And I grabbed the banana and that was it for me. I was all over the house with the banana. Why do the fools fall in love? Anyway, so there's that. Then, um, I used to be in another band in the um, late 70s called Heatwave, you may remember. So that, that was my first professional band. So anyway, again, moving on, years on. Um, I met this guy in, uh, of all places, in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm just trying to keep it real. Myself. That's very real. So I'm standing, you know, in this place, and he's in this line and we're, kind of whistling and looking up at this, you know, you know how guys do, right? And, yeah, yeah. Uh, for, uh, for all you women that don't know what you guys do in the bathroom, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't look this no, way, see, 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 And then just for very briefly, we move on and um, I get invited to, to, to join the Commodores and here comes the first album, Night Shift. So I join the Commodores halfway through the album. So now I'm, I'm coming to the studio every day and I'm listening to them record Night Shift. We haven't got to the song Night Shift yet, we haven't come to that recording yet. And so here comes now, Night Shift is the next song up in the studio for us to record. So they've laid the track, everything's down. Now it's time for vocals, right? <coughs> So this guy here, he yeah. says to me, whoa, 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 because Clyde was going to sing it, the whole thing originally himself. And then Wax said, well, why don't we introduce, this is a great time to introduce JD, the new guy, on by way of this new album, which I thought was a great idea, and so did our manager, and so did Clyde, and so did and everybody else in the band. Uh, Tom, uh, Ronald the Fred and Milan Williams. Everybody's here, cool. So they graciously gave me the second verse, you know, Jackie, mm -hmm, hear what you're doing now. So I sang that verse, and that's when things really uh, took off again for the Commodores because we won a, our first Grammy with, with that song. I mean, we, so many things happened when that song came out first. And uh, I just was so happy that all this was happening. Uh, can you imagine me? I'm like just out of England and, you know, I'm at the Grammys with these guys. And, and here's another thing. And then when we went up to accept the Grammy and it was Earth, Wind and Fire, Aretha Franklin were up that same category. And then they called us as the, the winners, and we walked up on stage, you can get this. So these guys have been together for years, and now they're going up for their first Grammy, finally. And what do they do? Instead of them all hop, rushing to the stage to grab the Grammy, they gave it to me. Aww. And they gave it to me and said, you go first. And so I'm holding the Grammy, even before these guys got it in their hand, all those years they've been chasing, right? And uh, I just I said my little thank you piece to the audience, and then off they went and said theirs. But you know, I will never forget that day all my life. Yeah. So, that's the kind of guys I'm working with here. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, just uh, really quickly, when you're singing, I don't hear your accent. Thank God. How do you do that? <laughs> Can you imagine? you once, twice. <laughs> That's a whole different song. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's how we close the show so we can get everybody out the <laughs> No, but you're right, you know, English people who 
Speaking um, accent wise, when you start singing, I mean, you listen to Paul McCartney, anybody, it just goes there. I don't know why. Instead of can't, it becomes can't. Uh, you know, instead of tomatoes, it becomes, you know, or whatever, the other way around. So that's an interesting observation, but I get asked about it a lot. A lot, yeah. William, let me, I want to direct this direct to William. Um, okay. And I'm sure there might be a few people out here that dying to ask a question like this. But when Lionel left the group, I mean, it was almost like, because I remember, you know, it felt strange that he was leaving. And I'm, I'm curious how you guys felt. Did you, was it one of those things like, okay, Lionel, you're going that way and we're going this way, or what are we going to do now, or what, how, what was this doing? Like? Well, I had a baseball bat. And I, you know, <laughs> No, uh, you know, look, um, Rich and I were roommates on the road for over 10 years. We had been together uh, as a group for 17 or 18 years. We had had, I don't know, 20 or 21 smash hits. Uh, we had traveled around the world together, you know, about 15 times. Um, you know, we, we had done a lot of things. And, um, you know, it was really, Grateful, right? Um, but you know when you're getting along with other members in your family, right? You can tell sometimes there's something there, right? Yeah. Something is happening, yeah. and um, and you try to get it out of them, and you know it's hard. They, they, I'm just you know, you're literally drag it out of them. What's the problem? Well, that sounds like my divorce. <laughs> <laughs> So, it's not about you, my love. <laughs> <laughs> See how quickly they came back around. <laughs> okay, but go on, Willie. So yeah, it, it was it was a very hard uh, time in our lives, right? Because look, Richie was the lead, was the lead singer in many people's eyes. It's funny too because. He was not so much in the group's eyes because Clyde, Walter Orange, his father, was singing more songs. Had a bigger voice, stronger voice. Well, you heard it in Brick House, right? And, um, and so Clyde sung most of the song. Um, but to the public, since Richard had sung three times, the lady still easy, close to you, sweet love. Those were the enormous smash hit songs we, we, we had. And he even sung um, Lady You Bring Me Up, which I, you know, he didn't write it, I, I wrote it, but he sung that song. So to everybody out there, he was the lead vocal. So in our minds, we were thinking, okay, what are we going to do here? Because the promoters, not so much the people, but the promoters, they want the lead, sing they want the lead singer on that stage who sung those songs. Right? So we think, oh, Lord, now the promoters are going to call us in because Richie's left. Now, Richie uh, said to me that he, he, was, he was leaving, and he asked me, you know, he said, well, I want you to tell the guys I'm leaving. And I said, oh, no. I said, when I leave, I'll tell the guys. When you leave, you tell the guys. You know, uh, that's right. And so, like I said, it, it, was, it was pretty devastating to us. But look, we knew it was coming. Because we had spent months and months with that dragging feeling going on in the group. And you know, when you know people come to the dressing room, they don't talk, you know, they go to that corner, they don't they don't get in the same cars anymore, you know, they become another guy. That kind of thing, you know. So it was a matter of look guy, you know, what, what is what what's happening? Tell us what's going on. Right. And finally one day he said, you know, I'm leaving the group. So then we knew right away that we had to get a new album out. Uh, we had to get a new hit song, and thus the song came out. Uh, you know, uh, Night Shift. So it was a saving, it was a saving grace for us. And um, you know, people always ask, you know, you guys, how do you get along with Richard? We get along fine. You know, having said that, I haven't spoken to him in three years. But, uh, that's probably why we get along fine. Little bits, little bits. Little bits, little bits. But, uh, and in the process now, we're, we're in the process of doing a comedy documentary and a movie. Yeah. So, so, 
you know, but, but we have a few legal problems with Richard right there too. Yeah, but we're gonna, we're gonna get past it. You know, if we have to bear it. Because I would love for everyone to know the story of the Commodores. And I want all the Commodores, all the former Commodores, to give their thoughts, their ideas, everything about themselves coming up through the Commodores from them, from them. Not from somebody, you know, paraphrasing and, right. you know, you need to hear it directly from them, right? And, and, and to that end, yes. first of all, congratulations on that. And I'm glad that you guys are the ones behind the story, the documentary, that you will own it and we will support it. <laughs> yes. Congratulations. It's so smart. And like you said, you want to hear from the Commodores directly from the Commodores. I am curious what the new Commodore would have to say about how it feels right now at this point in your career, you're writing your story of being a Commodore. So what would you say is the most exciting and you know, maybe the most challenging thing? I'll give you a safe answer. No, I just, we just <laughs> this is just family no. we want. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Doing this provides the best feeling in the world, the best feelings in the world. Um, my brother, my twin brother, Colin, and I we grew up around these guys. So they're not just friends of dads, they're not dads, co-workers, they're family. You know, family sometimes clashes heads. You, know, you bump heads, you clash. And men will be men, right? Growing up around them and then seeing their evolution much later in their career, to then be invited into that, that's probably one of the greatest feelings in the world. I'm excited to see what comes from this. This is my first time on the Soul Train cruise, hopefully not my last. Um, yeah, right on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's just so enjoyable. The fact that I get to do this with my twin brother, my best friend, around our uncles, right? And also, yeah, thank you. And having one of the greatest teachers, our father, you know, he's a musician first. I play drums, drum set just like he does. And my twin brother plays everything else that I don't play. So, you know, but to have that to be tailored and very fine-tuned by people who, who care that you can look up to, that you, you look at as mentors, that's the greatest thing. Now, the most challenging thing is going home after a show. <laughs> I've dreamed of doing this maybe for the last 20 years, and i followed that regimen of go to school, get a degree, uh, have a backup plan, be safe, and you can do whatever you want. So Colin and I followed that, and now we get to live a dream. So, it's the greatest feeling in the world, so. Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, we're gonna wrap this up real soon. I mean, I'd love to ask more questions, I really would. Um, but they've got another show to do. And, and hopefully, uh, William can stay on his feet this time. Because this, this ship is rocking like crazy, in more ways than one, okay? Uh, this is the 10th anniversary Soul Train cruise, and we're so excited that you guys are here today. So, Angela, I'm going to let you take it out. For Tony Cornelius, for the Commodores, and myself, Angela Scribbling, thank you so much for being with us on All Access Pass. Announcing the Soul Train Cruise 2024, the ultimate family reunion for fans of classic soul and R&B.
Groove to over 50 live performances from Boys to Men, The Temptations, War, Stephanie Mills, Tower of Power, The Manhattans featuring Gerald Alston, Melba Moore, The Dramatics featuring L.J. Reynolds, The Miracles, Radio, The Urban Gorilla Orchestra, Bobby Wilson, Cruise host Tony Cornelius, and many more. Plus, go behind the scenes and get to know the artists at celebrity interactive events, including panel discussions, artist Q&As, and more. Departing from Fort Lauderdale January 27, 2024, this seven-day voyage will sail in the luxurious Holland America Line New Amsterdam and stop in Tortola and St. Martin. Enjoy fine dining, sun-soaked tropical destinations, non-stop performances and events, dancing till dawn, and more. Soul Train Cruise sells out every year, so don't wait. Come celebrate the good life aboard the hippest trip at sea. It's time.